All right, so let's talk about how you set your timing and your point gap on these GM vehicles with the single point ignition system. And this was used all the way up until GM implemented electronic ignition, often in the early to mid 70s, depending upon the vehicle. Although GM did have transistorized ignition in some cars like Corvettes and Pontiacs, even in the mid 60s. In any case, here's what you wanna do. This is a Buick, so the distributor is in the front here. And if I go over here, you can see the Oldsmobile, where the distributor is in the back. First thing to note, there's the distributor there, is that all GM divisions used different engines during this period, unless it's, I should say, different V8s, not necessarily different six-cylinder engines, although sometimes they did. But the V8s are unique to the division, so there's nothing shared amongst them, aside from the distributors themselves, although the calibrations are different, the carburetors are shared, although the internals are different, but these are totally different designs. So whether you have a Chevrolet, Oldsmobile, Buick, Pontiac, Cadillac, they're totally different. In any case, like I said, the distributor's back here for this Tornado, but on the Buick V8s, this is a 430 cubic inch V8, that's a 425 and that 66 Tornado. The distributor's up front. And you know, some people like this better. I don't know, six of one, half dozen of the other. It sure makes it harder to do the point gap because you got the fan blade right here. But what you really want to do is, you're gonna see on the distributor, there's this little window. And if I take this out, this tool out, this Allen tool, it just simply covers this hole. Now inside there are the points when you change them and you want to get an Allen wrench it looks like this that fits in the points then you get out your handy dandy dwell meter this is an old one that was actually my grandfather's from Sears and you can see I've got it set to the dwell setting there's also a point setting and a tack setting set it to dwell and on these GM cars you want to have 30 degrees of dwell three zero so, and you can see there's an eight cylinder and a six cylinder. Hook the red of the dwell meter up to the negative of the coil. And then you can just hook the other lead up to anything that's a good ground. This is not a great ground, but it works. <laughs> An unpainted hose clamp. And then you wanna just take the Allen wrench and you move it back and forth clockwise and counterclockwise until the dwell, the dwell reads 30 degrees. And it doesn't take much movement. I mean, it might take maybe, I would say a quarter turn to move it two or three degrees. So just play around with it a little bit. So in other words, you basically just have to get, when you change the points on these GM cars, you just have to get the car to start. Then you can use the dwell meter to fine tune it. And if the car doesn't start when you first put it in, just move the dwell back and forth and eventually you'll get the car to fire up. So let's start the car up and you can see what I mean. I've already set this one and you'll see it reads 30 degrees. And there you are. I'm a little bit over 30, but close enough. You can also see, like I said, there's a tack setting here. Now the car's on fast idle, but you can check to make sure that your engine idle RPM are in the right spot. So we're good to go here. Then the next step, you always want to set the dwell first before you set the timing. And the timing, you want to take your timing light and clamp the lead onto the number one cylinder spark plug wire, which the number one cylinder varies depending upon what engine you're looking at. So it's the forward bank of cylinders. You can visually see that this bank is a little far forward of the passenger side bank. And oftentimes they're numbered somewhere on the intake manifold what cylinder number you have don't see them on this Buick. It might be there somewhere, but it's hard to tell. I think this Oldsmobile 
does say. Yeah, so that says number two. I don't know if you can see it. Eh, well, how's that? That says number one. So number one is on the driver's side. Often on GMs, it's on the driver's side. On Fords often, the number one is on the passenger bank. And they do number them differently. GM, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ford, I believe is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So don't just assume that whatever the cylinder number labeling is for your car, that it's consistent across makes because it isn't. You gotta know which one is the number one cylinder. So let's get the timing lead, clamp it to the number one cylinder. And then you gotta look at the index pointer that's down there and see what your timing reads compared to the spec. One tip I'll give you is it's often hard to read the pointers on the harmonic balancer or the indicator on the harmonic balancer. So I just take a little bit of white out and I put it on wherever that mark is. And then I can see it a lot better with the timing light. I find that works a lot better. So let's get the timing light and hook it up. By the way, to my point, here's my 74 Marquis Brome and the Ford 460. You can see this bank of cylinders. Well, trust me, it's visually ahead of that bank over there. So this is the number one cylinder. And again, like I said, Ford labels these differently than GM, but you can see the number one right there. So be careful which you think is number one. Always make sure to double check. And by the way, the distributors spin different directions too. So don't just assume that counterclockwise is advancing or retarding and counterclockwise is advancing or retarding. It, dif it differs by engine. So let's get that timing light out. All right, so now we got our timing light lead hooked up to the number one cylinder. Got our timing light hooked up. This is easy. Red goes to positive, black goes to negative. Unhook the vacuum advance from the distributor here. And you wanna make sure that the engine is at curb idle. So this one isn't, because it's still cold, but I'll demonstrate for you anyway here. So let's start it up. I guess it is. Now see the light? There you go. See the white mark on the harmonic balancer? That's the timing mark. So you want to make sure that that lines up with whatever the timing spec is on the harmonic balancer whenever you do this. And in order to advance or retard the timing, you just rotate the distributor clockwise or counterclockwise to get it set. So not a bad, not a bad job, actually pretty easy. That way you can always keep your car well tuned. So let's do that and button this car back up. All right, so we got the window back in, the distributor, got everything hooked up timing lights off and we're good to go now one tip is to start with the factory spec timing advance and then you can keep advancing it in one or two degree increments until you start to hear spark knock particularly a park throttle so make sure that you don't get spark knock otherwise you're going to be damaging your engine but usually you can go a couple degrees advanced beyond the stock timing if you want you get a little bit more power and you'll definitely feel it so give that a try, particularly on the mid-70s cars where the timing was super retarded for emissions. You may wake those engines up quite a bit. So let's take it for a drive now. And one thing I seemingly always notice after I've done this is I thought the car ran smooth, but it runs even smoother after I'm done. So, boy, these Buick V8s are just great. All the GM V8s of this era and by this era, I mean uh, the 60s era, are just spectacular. You start getting into the 80s and you have the HT4100 and that unfortunate engine. And I can't make the same statement, but this 430 in this Buick, just an absolute gem to drive. So smooth, so quiet. 
I just can't imagine anybody test driving this car and saying, boy, I do not like that car. It looks too good, it's too smooth, it's too powerful. No thank you.